but Bryn, i hope to, i hope i hope to meet you Bryn. um maybe next time because um you sound fascinating but i will we're gonna find i'm sure that's true and we'll find i'll out. watch this video later on yeah and, all right uh, and a little yeah. little life tip for you you've been giving out a lot of lovely wisdom this morning something for you to take away in your party bag your virtual party bag is say a che cheese is lovely absolutely lovely absolutely <laughs> lovely it's like fact check that absolutely lovely um scientifically proven and in the bible especially spooned oh she's she's right it is absolutely lovely spooned onto crusted bread with a coffee darker than cold. Yeah, i like i like a bit of spooning yes like a and spoon. a bit of, uh, on these cold on the cold mornings quite and part of knowing oneself another little thing for your party bag are silly simple things such as liking dad jokes and childish potty humor you've come to the right place and it is liz f right our sayosh boobies mm. in portuguese yeah exactly perfect yes exactly. Oh, yes. there you go someone someone answered it exactly well yes. we've we've set the bar really low so Grim can <laughs> actually come in and anything he says is going to be an improvement basically on the conversation <laughs> the, the only way is up the only way is up <laughs> yes. yeah. have a great day mate take care and all right thank you very much bye bye everybody bye -bye. Bye -bye. and we'll bye -bye. keep that applause going there goes the portuguese and in comes Bryn Tomes, everybody. Let's give him a nice round of applause. Namaste. Hey, Thank Namaste you. to you. Namaste. Well. Thank you very much for yeah. having me on your show. Well, it's an absolute uh, honor for us as well to have you on. Uh, caught sight of you on social media, and, and um, we've been able to form a, a whole show around human happiness because I think you're something of a, an expert and you've got some interesting things to say on the subject. And sorry, we've just been talking about boobies and incontinence so far this morning. As <laughs> the Portuguese says there, Bryn, the only way is up. So how are you this morning? I'm always fantastic, thank you. Um, being, fant being fantastic is a frame of mind and something you practice daily. And uh, that's ultimately how we shape our reality. Well, we could, we could probably stop there, can we? <laughs> <laughs> perfect, perfect. Um, uh, yes, because I, I don't know if you heard in the earlier conversation, but I was saying, I mean, my, my um, sort of, uh, uh, tuppence worth here is I think we've got exceptionally low expectations for happiness among humanity uh, uh currently um in in this this time in history sort of epidemically low that's a pandemic a pandemic of sort of um poor mental health i would say um and thank goodness there are fellows around like you um offering a different view uh on that let's find out how you got into it but before we do can we find out more about you as the man who has moved from south africa to portugal how did you get to be here uh, if you could tell us that on the good morning portugal show first of all for sure. Th and uh, thank you for, uh, for Portugal for having us. Um, my daughter and I are from South Africa originally. Um, I've raised my daughter on my own since she was nine months old. Wow. And um, there's just no future in South Africa anymore for her um, or for me. It's, uh, you know, the crime rates are through the roof. Uh, the economy is taking a big dive. And um, I don't want that as a future for my daughter. So we were looking for a country to... Um, in Europe to come through um, and you know I have uh, a, a British descent so I can obviously get to go there but um, no offense um, <laughs> to, to the Brits, no. but, but, but I don't like the way that much <laughs> we've covered that this morning the uh, we, we, ha we had solar life saying um i'm english and as such i crave disappointment that's all you need to know isn't it so, uh, yeah. <laughs> so um and um the climate was a big thing you know when you, you're changing climates um it's important to have something that's quite similar to what you're used to so the transition is quite easy um and uh portugal offered uh, some of the opportunities that we wanted to do um come to a place with a beautiful culture where we could feel safe um you know one of the top three safest countries in the world and that is why we uh transitioned here and um nice. you know love being here um as well as uh, everywhere else in the world that we we're ready to explore and uh, continue our journey how lovely, how lovely. Um, and which bit of Portugal did you choose, may I ask? Uh, we're in Lisbon. Okay, so you're right in the heart of things, in the capital there. Very good. All right, well, Correct. thank you for setting the scene there. Now, not many people, I, I think, sit on the edge of their bed as small children or even are in that uh, session at school where the careers officer comes in 
and puts her hand up and says, I want to be a neurosynthesist and life <laughs> transformation mentor when I grow up. I think <laughs> it, it, there may be more people doing that now because of you know what you're doing and how you're putting that into the consciousness. How did you get to be a neurosynthesist? What's your sort of origin backstory elevator pitch for this? So um, I've been an entrepreneur since I was 19 and I've been a self-serving individual since then. And um, it was um, my daughter's mother and I decided we were going to have a child and, uh, you know, three years. I said, well, give me three years. And at that time we were drug sexing and rock and rolling it uh, very hard. And I was living life with no purpose, <laughs> no direction. And uh, and three years kind of came past very quickly, and um, we're pregnant, and okay, so we're ready, love fine. And I held my daughter in my arms for the first time at her birth, obviously, um, and I fell madly in love with my child. And in that moment, I realized I was a mess, and um, that I couldn't be in the current state that I was, a leader that I meant to be, um, a, a good father um and that my purpose uh, was was much much more than just me mm. and so i had my awakening in that moment and oh, my uh, daughter then uh through the through nine months of her you know raising her i then realized that the life that we had was no longer me um, her mother decided she wanted to continue that life. I decided I wanted something different because I wanted to dig into myself to find out what it is that I meant to learn about myself in this experience. I had a, a very spiritual connection to myself at that moment in, in that time. And um, so I dug into neuroscience, psychology, NLP, quantum physics, quantum mechanics, stoicism, and you name it, everything I could possibly get my hands on as the mm. rabbit hole is so deep. And... Um, <laughs> Eventually, uh, my daughter, who's my greatest teacher, came to me when she was about, I think she was six at the time. She came to me and said, hey, Dad, why don't we start our own vlogging channel? And I, like, I was like, what? You're six? What do you know about yeah. vlogging? And she, I said, well, what are we going to vlog about? And she says, well, you know, let's teach other people how you've evolved so much and things like that. And it was in that moment I realized that um i i'd evolved quite a lot and grown so much in my capacity and my knowledge um and at that stage i was already coaching a neuroscientist who was uh, giving me a lot of the the information i needed to know in terms of to be able to translate what i felt intrinsically um mm -hmm. because you know the, if you think about how we make up the meaning of life and and the world around us um when you are connected to yourself you can feel your connection to the world but it's very difficult to explain that to somebody who's not in that zone and right. and is unable to intellectually uh, get past their analytical mind and to realize that there is something much more than just um you know the 3d world of uh, materialism which we we're all stuck in because we're conditioned in that that way um and here's an example to clear that up for everybody is that have a look around you right now in your room it takes choose an object and that object takes between a thousand and three nanoseconds to perceive that object now mm -hmm. that might be a small amount of time but it's actually a lot of time and what happens is you visually take a snapshot of it, your um, retina inverts the image and then sends the signal through to a structure called the thalamus um, in the brain. And the brain then has to choose, the thalamus then has to choose which part of the um, brain it should send it for processing. And so this is a uh, visual, so it will send it to the occipital lobe and it will then send a same equal signal straight through to um, our limbic region which is responsible for our emotional uh, our emotions and things like that but more predominantly for our survival um, which is our fight flight or freeze mechanism and so we live life in delay we don't live it in real time yeah. and we use our perception our perception is actually based on our past not our present 
um, in order to try and bring us as close to real time as possible. So we are constantly referencing patterns and behaviors from our past in order to predict the present, in order to speed up that immediate connection with the present moment, because otherwise to consciously think about doing the same thing over and over again as if you were a newborn would hinder our ability to evolve. Yeah. So we need to reference past because we have a past. And the problem with that is that it's faulty because yeah. every single moment of now is the only thing that actually exists. And so, well, I heard you talking about, you know, negativity and um, how we are constantly stuck in these sort of low vibrational thoughts and things like that. Our actual brain is designed um, to look for survival. We think 40 to 80,000 thoughts per day, of which 90% of them we analyze, well, 90 to 95%, depending on uh, which piece of paper you want to read. That's but cool. we analyze um, them with what we call a negative bias, 90 to 95% of our thoughts. We're looking through the lens at all of our thoughts with a negative bias because of what? For survival. Mm. Our base program is survival. It's um, the first part of the brain that grows is the brainstem. And the brainstem is responsible for survival of our species. That's why we're not, um, that's why we're geared for survival, which is why we look out at everything in a negative bias. Mm -hmm. And, you know, survival and reproduction, obviously, they're just the two base programs that we have. Mm -hmm. And so we look at everything as possible threats for survival, which is, you know, before we used to have lions and tigers and bears and some tribe wanting to steal us um, onto their side. But now we have social media, we have uh, Facebook, we have uh, TikTok, we have all these kind of things. We have what people so say to us. And, and yeah. so what happens is we create a perception from these. Now, perception is very simply, it's a, it's like a zoomed in telescope. So you're zoomed in. If I was to say to you, oh, do you see that over there? You would have to use a zoom in mm. telescope to have a look at a particular object. And then you hand it back to me, zoomed in. And you say, Brent, do you see that over there? I go, I can't see that. No. Why? Because I have to zoom it out and then have a look. So everything that we want is already in front of us. But we just can't see it because of our zoomed in perception. That's the, that's the problem. Because we cannot absorb all the amount of data that we're exposed to every single second. So we have to choose or pick a lane in terms of what we want to look at and focus on. And that's why they, there's that saying that says where, where focus goes, energy flows. Yep. Because you're literally zoomed in looking at that particular thing. So, I mean, I'm going to tell you um, a story, for example. Um, you know, I was, um, I'll never forget the time I was, I was walking down the road. I was on a farm. Um, under the uh, Af beautiful African sky, and there were stars everywhere. And I was thinking to myself, how amazing this life is and how blessed I am to experience this moment. And all of a sudden, there was a rustle in the, uh, the, the bushes in front of me. And I switched on my searchlight, and I started looking in front of me to, you know, what, what was the sound? And my heart is like racing. And I didn't know whether to run or to stand still or to get ready to fight. The question is, in that moment, am I thinking about the endless of opportunities that are on the world and what it has to offer? Or am I only focused on survival? I think you zoomed in on survival there in that moment. And so that's what we are all doing is we're just surviving. Mm -hmm. We are all constantly zoomed in on survival because we've – um, you know, we're fed so much bad news. We're fed overstimulation because of technology, because it's just spinning so fast, we can't control it. And when we can't control something and we have a fear for things, we activate our survival mechanism. And uh, that survival mechanism puts us into a huge overwhelm, um, which makes us feel lethargic, tired, depressed, you name it. And this is the ongoing process of why we get stuck in this kind of um, thinking and this kind of dialogue. We are thinking lack all the time. And what it means is simply that you're not taking control of your mind. Yeah. And if we, um, one of my favorite sayings by Yangi Rupeshe was the mind is the source of all experience. And by changing the direction of the mind, we can change the quality of everything we experience. When you transform the mind, everything you experience is transformed.
Mm -hmm. And that's how important it is to understand that we are taught from a um, very young age to brush our teeth, to brush our hair, to pack our lunch, to put on our business suits and, you know, follow this process, which is an unconscious habit that we've created for ourselves. But through the evolutionary process, we've lost the ability to connect with ourselves and which is to sit down with ourselves in space and time to um, direct our mind and train it like as if we're going to the gym to realize what is real and what isn't. Mm -hmm. And we do this funny enough. And this is why it's such a, a big popular thing is through meditation and meditation, you know, is, uh, I don't think it's been explained to people properly because after through all the what has what has yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> so what it, what it hasn't been explained is through all the ancient texts that I've read and through all the research that I've done is the main point of meditation meditation is not to take you off to some far off distant lands that you'll be connected to this that and the other sure there has an aspect of that because of the the fact that in mind everything is created your entire reality of what you're seeing and experiencing right now is only created in your mind mm -hmm. and so the actual point of it is to be able to bring your focus back using an anchor point and to strengthen that ability because what happens is we um in our day ongoingly stuck in dialogue in our head about the past the future or whatever it might be and this is the brain on what we call the default mode network it's where the brain has what we call free play in the scientific community and that means that the brain is on the subconscious mode and it is randomly it's saving energy funny enough this is an energy saving process but what it does is it randomly jumps between different networks in our brain um, which all contain a thought pattern, a habit, and a feeling. And that's why you can be feeling fantastic one second and the next minute you can feel like rubbish because mm. of this jumping from different networks and different thoughts. And the brain is on energy-saving mode and the brain wants to put you on energy-saving mode, the unconscious, as much as possible so it can predict energy consumption for survival. Yes, And it would rather try and have you on the autopilot where it can predict the outcome. Even if it's misery, it's still predictable because mm -hmm. the brain hates the unknown. And this swinging and jumping from these different neural networks is like a monkey swinging from branch to branch, which is why they call it the monkey mind. Mm. so that's where the actual term comes from is not from the scientific community but more from the spiritual community but the two integrate because we have neuroscience today that we can actually say oh wow these guys actually intuitively understood and felt this from the beginning and they didn't have all this advanced equipment that we have now but this is exactly what's happening and this is why it makes sense and it's interesting, isn't it? Because it would appear there is some sort of convergence of the spiritual and the scientific coming to the same point. And still at that point, we have the choice, don't we, um, to act on it or not. And that seems to be where you're positioned uh, for humanity is, okay, so you've got this choice. Can we create different habits? Can we see things differently and produce different results in our lives? Uh, is, that, is that a sort of fairly accurate uh, yeah, summary of where you I are? I, I'm a bridge um, to uh, spiritualism, from the science to the spiritualism. And when I say spiritualism, it's not religion. It's um, Spiritualism is a connection to yourself and to the world around you. You can believe whatever you want to believe because your belief is important for you. It's how you, it makes a part of your ego, your character, whatever. And that should be cherished. Mm -hmm. But you, you are still a spiritual person, whether you want to be or not, you are still because you are connecting. You need to connect with yourself because you are only atoms. You are only energy. And yeah. so that energy is, uh, you know, is, is what you are in your rawest form in this, in this, this lifetime. Mm -hmm. And so I'm a bridge because even for myself, I am, you know, over uh, thinker analytical um i i need some proof which is why the science really opened everything up for me and made the aha moment because if somebody tells you listen you know take a, a walk off that cliff and there is um a bridge there um you're not going to really believe them because it's just like it's quite a jump 
Mm. to go from what you can visually use in terms of your uh, processing and tools and now you want me to suddenly uh, <laughs> to, to take this this leap of faith it's it's quite a huge thing so when you have knowledge um, which is um, one of the the main criteria here having knowledge allows you to analytically process it using your tools which is the mind you are not the, your mind you are not your body either but you use your tools in order to create um, understanding in this lifetime so that you can live the best life. Mm -hmm. And that takes daily and every single moment work. It's an ongoing process. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's never done, is it? I guess you, you, you have to stay, you have to have the sort of poise and insight, I suppose, of a, a, a Zen master or a monk seeing that you have constantly have this possibility and then to act on it, which is arguably why being a human being they, is so They don't great. even have it. No, I right. Mean, right. They, it, it remains they, an ongoing they, choice. They're, yeah, they're a caricature, aren't they? They're a stereotype of, of, of what we're talking about, for sure. Every single day. Even the, um, some people choose to live in this world, this 3D world, to live in their nice houses and all sorts of things, which we do. That's a choice. Mm -hmm. Okay, You're not forced to do it. And some people can't handle that choice. Yeah. Some people prefer to deepen their understanding and stuff by going to monasteries and because they can't handle their thoughts. Mm -hmm. And the thoughts are an endless stream. We think 42, 80,000 them every single day. You don't get to choose those thoughts unless you're consciously choosing them. The yeah. brain is actually designed to create thoughts, conscious or unconscious. Mm -hmm. And the unconscious ones run your blood pressure. You make a million new cells every single second. You, uh, you know, everything that is run in terms of your bodily functions is run by your subconscious. It's beautiful. Right. A miracle. A miracle for sure. Now, th th something I want to ask you about mm. is you, your daughter's role in this, because, you know, you had the breakthrough with, um, you know, being a, a, an analytically minded person that's helped you to kind of bring the world's or your lobes together or however one sees it. But clearly you had some sort of major pattern interrupt. You had an angel visit you, I would say, in your arms there. I've wept every time I've seen my children uh, and as new, fresh newborns and been, you know, smacked around the head. I have been brought it most, most deeply into the present moment at, at times like that, where this sort of miracle of life is available because of the suspension of other faculties of programs that are normally running. And it sounds, it sounds like you had that as well, this sort of moment. Uh, an opportunity, an angelic moment, you know, with a little angel of a baby uh, in your arms there. Um, and that snapped you out of a situation. Do you miss the sex, drugs and rock and roll, the world that you talked about before? <laughs> um, not at all. Uh, now, um, being sober um, is miles more enjoyable. And I'll tell you why. It took me a you, you gave it up. You've, it's I gave not it up. Like, yeah, like yeah. you moderated it. You just decided no, that. I, get, I, I gave it up. I mean, once in a blue moon, I'll have a, um, a glass of wine with some friends or something like that. But I, I gave gave it up, and I'll tell you why. So Go I just on. want to fix my lighting here. So your, your game of uh, operation on the whiteboard behind you is, is being appreciated. <laughs> and there's a comment piece made that I want to come back to, which is very interesting, because I think it's kind of demonstrated. That, that's the tutorial field, which is uh, around us, which uh, we, we connect to the around the world with using our heart. But I'll explain that to you just now. So um, what happens is we are a chemical soup. And our body is using um, chemical signals and electrical signals to create um produce chemicals within our body to have our experience so for example th our body's responsibility is to maintain a internal homeostasis mm -hmm. so if you are taking alcohol for example and putting it into your system you're increasing the chemicals within your system and you what's the brain going to do it's going to signal other chemicals to be released or produced in order to counter that to bring you back into homeostasis and when you do that now you have an excess of another chemical and that excess of that chemical when it wears off now suddenly puts you in an excess in the other one so what happens is you're constantly yo-yoing between this chemical imbalance mm. and as you know from anxiety depression all these kind of things they're usually some sort of chemical imbalance and so you are creating your own anxiety, depression, and things like that from your own chemical imbalance because of the fact that you're you're changing you're you're changing the cocktail. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. And so what happens is people say, well, you know, life is boring without uh, drinking or drugging or whatever. It's not. You just need to go through that process of changing your habitual reliance on it to yeah. getting to a place where you don't. And what happens is instead of having these massive highs and these m massive lows, you become more centered and your equilibrium um, place is, you know, your mar the margins are smaller in terms of your highs and your lows. And it's far more manageable than when you're constantly going up and down the whole time. And we're talking about, you know, um, and again, this is no, everybody must choose what the, it is that they want yep. for themselves and their experience in their life. I'm only sharing what, what I've learned from my own experience in mm -hmm. order to, for, for people to understand. I'm not saying that don't ever have a drink. And as I said to you, I mean, uh, you know, on Christmas, I had uh, a couple of glasses of wine. Mm -hmm. But I also knew that the next day that I'm going to feel like ter terrible. So I took responsibility for the fact that that would create a signal interrupt for my body, which will have my subconscious start coughing up a whole lot of rubbish, which yeah. it did. And, yeah. and that's what we've got to take responsibility for. We can't say it's the external external environment. So if you that's think about it, step, though, Bryn, isn't it, I mean, the, 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 uh, we've only got a few minutes left and I'm hoping you'll come back and maybe even have a something of a residency here on the Good Morning Portugal show. I hope you've enjoyed yourself and, and we can Definitely. talk about that later. We've Barandi's in. Um, hola, bon dick. Uh, I think he meant to say bon dia there. In fact, yes, <laughs> he, he did. Um, Bob, uh, I left survival for thrival a long time ago. Sounds oh, I like love that. Sort of reorientation. <laughs> survival for thrival. Love it. And survival, it's why many of us choose to migrate to give us a better chance of living a better life. Uh, that's um, Mrs. M next door. And um, Pete has this comment. And we'll thank you, for, Joao de Nort, for your uh, mention of uh, Tom T. Hall. We can finish on that. Um, I think it's just a, a reference to what I was talking about with, you know, a bit sitting on the edge of your bed as a kid or whatever. You know, some people used to say, I want to be an astronaut or a train driver. And now they might say, you know, uh, I, I want to be a neurosynthesis. It must be hard to find other neurosynthesis and transformational life mentors on account of those not being actual jobs that exist, maybe. But at three nine, and I think that's a bit of a rant about, yeah, there's people who want to pay to go on these courses and blah, blah, blah. And yeah, uh, I think what you, we could see there is Pete has perhaps gone into the process you talked about. He's seen you, he's picked up a key, few key words of what you're talking about, and then sorted you into his past or prejudices about what he thinks he knows about you. Is that a fair assessment? He's making up his experience and it's his life to enjoy the way he wants to. But if he's getting, <laughs> but if he's getting triggered by something that I'm saying, yeah. then he has to look at himself as a reflection because we are only seeing an external reflection of ourselves as a mirror. And yeah. the reason why we say that, um, even Anais Nin has this beautiful saying, we see things as, as we are, not as they are. Yes, they are absolutely. And the reason why is because of this perception problem. We are zoning in on or zooming in on things that trigger us or things that we need to learn or um, things that we need to see for ourselves. And if we're not open to learn and grow, then we're constantly going to be triggered in our life. And when we get triggered in life, we're signaling our brain to, uh, to switch on our fight, flight, or freeze mechanism, which is increasing the cortisol in our body, and that's how we get sick. We and that's what we see all the uh, – that is re very prevalent in this age, and often it has people reaching for a drink, doesn't it? It was one way of managing the effects of that trigger. That, drinks and things like that are all just numbing. They're just a way to numb. And the problem is they have a, a, a cycle. So, for example, if you think about smoking a cigarette – what, what you do is when you breathe in on with a cigarette, you activate your um, fight, flight, or freeze mechanism. When you breathe out, you activate your digest and relax as part of the autonomic nervous system. So we are constantly staying in between breathing in and breathing out with what we call primed. Our autonomic nervous system is primed. So when you breathe in, you activate your fight, flight, or freeze. When you breathe out, you switch it off. Problem is when you breathe in with a cigarette, for example, it's a small breath in. And a long breath out, which means that you activate the parasympathetic nervous system, which bring, which is why you feel relaxed when you smoke a cigarette. I used to love that. I used to love that. <laughs> exactly. And then what, yes. happen, then what happens is your brain goes, oh, you shouldn't be doing this because it's bad for your health and triggers your fight, flight, or freeze again. And so you stay in this loop of constantly be, um, for re relaxation. You create a habit because you associate it for being feeling relaxed when you smoke. But as soon as you do it, you know it's bad for you, and then you switch it back on again. <laughs> so it's just like yeah. you get stuck in this uh, wheel.
Yes. Yeah. Amazing. OK, so uh, we do need to draw to a close. And it's this point where I ask you to give us a little soundbite or a bit of homework or, or, or whatever, but, you know, based on some of the things we've been talking about um, this morning. It's been great to have you here. Your website is on the um, on the ticker tape uh, rolling beneath the screen. Oh, Ped is in as well. Bon dia to you in Wales uh, over there. Uh, it would be great to have you back. Um, what's what is your what's perhaps a little bit of a takeaway you might offer to people between um, now and when you come back? So the, um, I've, I'm just going to put like, uh, if you don't mind in the chat, if you can run that for people, of course, um, yeah. uh, my community is where you can, um, come and actually do a Sundays. We, we get together on a Sundays for an hour in Lisbon and, uh, I teach you how to use your tools, your brain and your body better so that you can live a life full of, um, joy and happiness. It takes everyday work you need to wake up in the morning redirect the mind i teach you all the practices how to do it and you can live in abundance by creating chemicals of happiness because happiness is only a chemical that circulates around your blood bloodstream and that's all emotions are they are feedback through for the brain so the takeaway is simply to live the life that you want to, you have to be in control of the experience. And to be in control of the experience, you have to redirect the mind. And to redirect the mind takes practice. It takes mm -hmm. daily practice, moment to moment practice. Because when you are, your brain is switching off and thinking about things in the past or the future, you are losing your one main commodity, the most expensive commodity, one that you can never get back. It's called time. Mm -hmm. We put all of our, our precious things in safes and behind garages and we lock them up. But the one commodity that you cannot ever get back is time. And when we get stuck in these old um, thinkings of future or past concepts that don't exist um, anymore, then we are losing time. And so it's, that's why the whole objective is to stay present in the moment by understanding how the brain works as a tool and using it to create your experience in this lifetime. Right. If you want to be in a community of that kind, uh, there's the link for doing that on the screen. I've got to ask you one more question and, and to generalize sure. this a bit more. Uh, and I, I hope you're OK for just a minute or so more. Um, I think Christmas will be different in 2024. I think we're going to have a very interesting year. Now, historically, for humanity, we are we are living in interesting times, which is a Chinese curse as much <laughs> as anything else, isn't it? Do you think there's a collective sense of this going on at the moment? Would you what would you say about that? Uh, you know, the, this is very much, as you said, taking responsibility for our personal perspective and view of the world and our health and our well-being is there a collective energy around this going on as well are we at some sort of tipping point with these sorts of realizations and people putting them into practice would you say i think um with the advancements in technology we're able to spread the message a lot better um, and I'm going to say something that's uh, is going to trigger a lot of people, which is great. Um, <laughs> you rascal! <laughs> but you know, uh, Jesus was the first Tony Robbins, and the reason why he couldn't talk about the way we connect to the world and everything around us is because they were going to kill him for it. Yeah. Because why? Because it didn't fit into an agenda of people who were trying to direct a certain dialogue. Mm -hmm. And which was aimed on the usual stuff. So the point is that we've been around people like myself. Um, we are conduits to um, understanding more um, to help people break past the limitations of the analytical mind to connecting with everything around us and creating out the happy, beautiful experience um, that we can live this beautiful life together. And I think with the advancements of technology, we're now seeing more and more people connecting and getting the point. And that is contributing to a bigger global spread of this understanding that we are responsible for our own happiness and that we can have whatever we want if we know how to use our tools, because we are all human species designed exactly the same way. Um, and therefore we're ignorant to think that we can do it differently when we actually have a specific process and way of doing things. Um, we designed that way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's not, you know, it's not rocket science. It's kind of human science, isn't it? It's human <laughs> science. It's, but we're ignorant. We don't, we don't take an interest. We don't have a self-interest to go and learn more and more about each other. And so that's yeah. uh, where people like myself come in to try and spread these, the, this kind of news.
And it's funny you should mention Tony Robbins because back in 1994, I published a magazine in Sheffield where I lived in, in Yorkshire and he was coming to the town. He'd been invited by quite a visionary, a sort of high up in, in the sort of civic um, um, machinations of the, like a po local politician sort of guy who said, you know, well, I've had some really great work uh, with this uh, breakthroughs with Tony Robbins. I'd, I'd like to invite him uh, to take on Sheffield as a city project. As a and city project, wow. Yeah, and I this is 1994, Brent. And I, I advertised this on the back of my magazine, 5,000 copies. And the reception I got was a, a very similar in many ways. We don't need this American coming over here to Yorkshire telling us how to live our lives and be happy. So it's, it's a kind of, it's a, it's a perennial thing. And perhaps things are changing a little bit. Uh, Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, Gandhi, Martin Luther King, and on and on. These are the I think, that are being uh, mentioned. Brent. Thank you so much. Uh, Namaste. Being... Will you come Thank back? You. Will you come back and see us again? I would I would love to come back. And in fact, what, what I'm inviting um, everybody to do is to watch this beautiful show and um, come on. Uh, myself and Carl will carry on chatting about times and things. But I can actually help people live on the show. So if you have questions and things like that, you, you want to pitch to me with your own th um, challenges that you have. We all, um, Carl and I will work together to find out a way to do it, but I can help you change the way that you see the world and experience it. Um, I might give you some tough love on it, um, but I think some, but I think, some, but I think sometimes you need that yeah. um, in order to pivot into a way that you can take responsibility of your own life, because that's the problem is that we're not taking responsibility and, um, and uh, this will, will help you, um in your own quest and your own experience of life because you can really we have the tools to write whatever we want in life and that's why they call it be the actor in your own uh, play because whatever persona you take on because you've been doing a different personas throughout your life you can be whatever you want and it's that easy marvelous Brent, thank you for being here great to meet you see you on screen and we'll see you namaste to you and we'll see you again soon i hope take care bye for now there he goes there's Bryn tomes uh, it's really difficult. I'd like to do a dissolve and a fade, especially in those sort of situations. But people get unceremoniously dumped off the screen. Excellent comments. We'll, we'll finish with um, with John's uh, a mention of a, a country song, I think, which uh, sums it up for him. Um, Jack saying, uh, Jack Polly, I agree 100%. We're all responsible for ourselves, giving a helping hand to everyone else along the way. The great Garvo. He was in here spilling wine and smashing glasses only recently. Perspective is gained when you move away from the centre. Sounding very Buddhistic there, Garvo. Um, a good, actually, he's over at GMP VIP with some of his uh, grounding exercises, if you want to see those. A good guide, whatever the name or culture, is always handy for a wayward traveller. And I guess we're all wayward travellers in some sense, are we not? Uh, by his own admission, the sex, drugs, and rock and roll man, uh, whose heart was uh, smashed open when he looked at his little baby in his arms. It's a great moment for fathers, I think. That um, first of three messages from John: I love little baby ducks, old pickup trucks, slow-moving trains, and rain. I love little country streams, sleep without dreams, Sunday school in May, and hey, I love you too. Um, oh, would you rather not? I love leaves in the wind, pictures of my friends, birds of the world, and squirrels. I love coffee in a cup, little fuzzy pups, bour bourbon in a glass, and grass. And I love you too. I love <laughs> what kind of grass are we talking about there? I love honest, open smiles, kisses from a child, tomatoes on the vine, and onions. I love winners when they cry, losers when they cry, music's when it's good, and life. And I love you too. Well, lovely, uplifting note to end the show on there, Gerard de Nort. And we'll, we'll actually, I think the, um, the person you love um, greatly uh, in this life, Pam. Let's let's just put her picture up as a little moment. Uh, I guess we could uh, meditate upon this picture, the stillness and tranquility in this beautiful, misty picture of Pont de Lima uh, from yesterday. Thank you very much to Bryn. Thank you very much to the Portuguese. And thank you to you um, for tuning in this morning. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sprinkle gumper dust on you and uh, wish you a very good morning. And we'll see you tomorrow for some Feel Good Friday Felomena fun. Take care and bye for now. Bom dia, Portugal. In Portugal, there's a YouTube show full of fun facts you need to know. Carl brings the bell. Yes.
words will come and they will blow your mind. The audience will do so in kind. The little vanity mixed with some insanity on the morning show with GMP. Good morning, Portugal, and I'd like to welcome you to another fantastic day.